Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Zach Jenkins, Dunstan Thorne, David Simmons, Kayla B, Roman Sevchenko, Meche Moria, Andrew Wadsworth, E. Yalenak, Bree Hutchian, Sarah Homan. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Special thanks to Bryn for today's submission. May you live long, imposter. Rusty Quill presents Stella Firma. Maybe he's never going to be on time. Maybe it's just 20 minutes forever. If I could replace him with an Imogen robot that looked like Drexel. Yes. Maybe I'll just search in... Imogen online. David, what are you doing on Imogen? What? No, nothing. By which I mean, good afternoon, David. How are you? Hello. Uh, Yes, I'm good. Swift-fingered David tapping away quietly in the darkness. Let's just put the light on there. There it is. (laughs) Tapping away in the darkness there. Yes, no, I'm just, you know. So did you get invited... To the party? Do what we party? A, what are you talking about? Party, you know, um, Bromius's party, Silax. What the hell is Bromius? We client yesterday. Oh, that! No, I didn't even begin to follow that up, David. I said that because you seemed sad, and then oh. I left, and then I was like, ah, he's not my boss. And that's pretty much the extent of my thought. Oh, have I been invited to a party? As we mentioned, I've never been invited to a party, and that's never stopped me. So if it's stopping you, David, whose fault is that? Is it? Is it mine? No! It's the rooms. It's it's yours, is what I was saying. Oh. You're not allowed to leave the room. That is, to a certain extent, the, the confines of the room. But mainly, it's you and your lack of imagination. We could have a party in here. And what would that look like, David? Would you and me? Well, no, and some Hatra, other people. maybe. Yes, and Imogen. Imogen's everywhere. Well, good. Then she will be on time. Party invite logged. And early. And, and late. And late. And just just all. Yes, but, you know. Imogen sh- eternal. Yes, so that's good. And that is the sum total of people I know. We could invite the board. I know the board. You would... Or the build the, team. You'd, you know, you'd like to invite the board. Yes! You do not contact the board. Do you, you, know, get to be- do you have any idea what would happen if you sent a message upstairs to the board? I don't know how to do that. You would just disappear, David. What? I wouldn't even know. I would come I would come in one morning, afternoon, mid to late evening. I'd come in, and there would just be a burn on the floor. And there'd be a little note saying, Wait, that- guess who tried to contact the board? This idiot. Well, that sounds a lot like you. Did the you write the board contacts you. Okay. You do not contact the board. Okay, well... Imogen might contact the board, but you know why? Imogen's an all-powerful robot. Okay, so, well, if if the board ever want to be invited to a party in this room, I would be happy to have them. Now, David, an open invitation is sort of like contacting the no, board. You're on, not, no, you're on no, dodgy no, no, ground no, no, there, David. No, 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 I just said you're something on a, you're into on the a air. shifting plate. No, no. Thin no. ice. Watch it, buster. Anyway... Anyway, there's a, a we've got another brief. Oh, obviously, shock because that's our work and our jobs, and which we're all very. <sighs> we have twenty minutes for this one. As well. Oh, you, again, shock. Anyway, initiating. From, well, yes, shock because we should be on time because of. Oh, should we? Yes, the things that we've been heard, talking has about. Has it hurt the briefs so far? Yes. I, I don't think so. Well, I I disagree. Well, we'll see. And who's it, in charge? We'll see. Is it you, Hartro? Oh, you've got me there. And we shall see in the review. Yes, we shall. What she thinks. We shall see. Yes, we shall. Yes, see. we shall. Yes, yes, we shall. Shout and tweet. Yes, you shout and. Oh, oh, look at this beach. It's full of shells. Yes, yes. Well, Let us frolic. Yes, we shall frolic. Because you shall level with critical. shells that heart throws shelling alerted. onto you. You're coming apart in your corners, David. Read look, the brief. anyway, it's from Lorik Brinnison, king of the armoured polar bears of Svalbard. There are a lot of words in there that I don't understand, but why do they want the planet built? They say that you humans, that's you, because I'm a clone, which I don't 
It's, you. it's sort of a human. No, well, you. It's a facsimile. You humans. Yes, you humans. We. Have messed up this planet for too long. Yes. Don't know which. And now all my lovely Arctic glaciers are melting. Yes. So I'm going elsewhere to somewhere nice and cold. Preferably a whole planet covered in snow and ice. Okay. So long and thanks for all the seals. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and they must have other cold weather creatures for me to feast on hmm. the cuter the better okay so we, we we want your basic ice planet here you want this this is not a complicated job david you would think which planet did you ruin exactly that's what i was getting to this is a little bit of a party foul on humanity's part because oh uh, uh like going to a party uninvited is that a party foul i or? wouldn't know it's like a chicken at a party it's a party foul so you wouldn't, you shouldn't bring a chicken. You shouldn't bring a chicken. No one wants it there. Oh look, it's it's done its business on the so floor. Bringing a fowl to a party is a party fowl. Look, I'm not trying to make a joke out of this, David. I'm sorry, no, I this is very serious. I actually brought some chickens to a party, and everyone was furious. But what I'm trying to say is that we have a bit of a history. You with, have a bit of a history. W- the, the, the board, we, everybody has a history with the polar bears and indeed their various home planets. Now. I don't know if you remember, David. Earth is gone. Earth has been gone for a very long time. Yes, I'm aware. And on that planet, there were polar bears. Okay. And no one is... was more shocked than humanity when we left to find out the polar bears had left years before. They had worked it out and, and left on ships. We don't know where they built them, David. Right. Just one day, mountain opened up, spaceship shot out. We are like, what was that? Later, turns out, all the polar bears were on that. They were really on top of that whole, you know, planet thing we ruined. And as we all, you know, found a new life amongst the stars, Mm -hmm. we, you know, caught up with them. And we may have used the planet they were on to dump our rubbish. Thus, also ruining that planet uh, and then they moved again and then we found them and they were so it started to feel a bit vindictive after a while i think we right. were a, we, we i think we were a little bit salty about the fact that they had worked out you know that level of space travel years before and just left without us sure we were the reason they were having to leave and why would you bring that guy along but still it hurts so you know obviously that was a while ago but as you can see from the brief there we still do occasionally you know because of a or oh, oh, one of our one of our stars exploded or or because you know there was a radiation leak from a from a power unit we were using to 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 make a moon go around or something like that it will ruin their planet and as you can see there we've melted that one they need a new one and unfortunately, who's the only terraforming game in town? Stella Firma Limited, so okay. they've had to they've had to come back. So Oh, that's it, humiliating. It, it's pretty humiliating for them, and that's why they're very cross with us, but they're also vastly rich, because you know, who's gonna give a bad deal to a polar bear? Well you well, you're gonna well, you gonna you're gonna shirk the polar bear on a deal? Cut a few percent it'll maul your face. I'm just going to polar Just look one up, bear. Look one up. Polar bear fact file. Images. Oh, that looks lovely. Yeah, they look lovely, but they po- take your face right off. Polar bear during a business meeting. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Ooh. that's a, that's a good suit. Oh, that is a powerful stance. That's a powerful stance. Wide, wide stance. Goodness me! You can see everything, David. Yes. You're not going to mess with that bear. No. Exactly. Right. And that's the kind of person we're dealing with. Okay. Here. I say person, being bear, bear. It's the kind of bear we're dealing with. Okay. Right. A powerful. Powerful. So what I'm saying? Well, they, naked. Well, armored. Well, no, na- they, they have like naked? a suit on, but, but because they're a bear, there's, just, the... there's, there's no there's no bottom to it. Sure. So it's a sort of a bear and a breastplate and nothing else, just straddling some sort of creek. Yeah, and just dangling. That's a business in, into the creek. That's a business creek. Okay. All polar bears do all of their business above a creek. It's in case maybe a salmon's in there. Okay. So we're going to need some creeks. David, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. But what I was going to say. I don't. I don't. I don't want to shoot that idea well, down. I'll just. I'll, I'll put it as don't a note. Don't write it down. No. Okay. It's I'll, not confirmed. No, it's yet. gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. But what we need to do is we need to make one darn tootin good Arctic planet, and we need to make it pretty, pretty thoroughly. Because I'm not going to say that the polar bears will come and get us, but polar, polar bears, bears will come, will come and get, get us. us. Yes. You know, quicker than the board, quicker than Hartro, quicker than Imogen. Polar bear, knock knock, maul maul, power stance, leave. Hail the board. And beware the bear. Right. Okay. Okay, so we need to get this very right. Right. Yes. So we so, so go over the key details again. Okay, so key, key details. We there's know, a lot of stuff okay. in that brief. So all of their lovely Arctic glaciers are melting. Yes. So they're going to go and find somewhere nice and cold. Yes. Preferably a whole planet 
covered in snow and ice. Sure. They say so long and thanks for all the seals. I don't understand. No. I, I'm assuming maybe there was some sort of trade deal where we gave okay. them seals. So they like seals. They love because they, they, they love said thank seal. you for the seals. Oh, they love a seal. Okay, and they need other friend and dinner. Okay, well, the that. dog of the sea. Well, exactly. So, other cold weather creatures for me to feast on. Okay. The cuter the better. Would you say seals are cute? Oh, they're adorable. Okay, and they're are adorable. They cold weather creatures? Yes, they they will swim in in frigid water. Oh, so we need water as well. Ah, that's a good point, David. And well, yeah, an Arctic planet doesn't necessarily mean entirely entirely snow and ice. Right. There'll be snow. Yes, there'll be ice. Yes, some of the snow and ice will be in the water. Yes, but as you can tell from my previous sentence, I mentioned water because there's also water there. Right, and that's so, some sort of ocean full uh, of seals. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So what we want is basically a resort of sorts, mm. a polar bear resort. Okay. You are in your natural habitat, which is to say the frigid Arctic waste. Yes. But guess what? Not so frigid, not so arctic, not so waste. Little warmer, little nicer. Well, no. Deck I mean, chairs. No. Maybe some heating fans. No. Oh no, it's all melted again, David. I've I've made a mistake. Yes. No. You you want it to be very cold. I mean, That's keep right. the deck chairs. Sure. But you just very cold. But every time I try and think of this this holiday planet no, the, for the, the bears, I'm just okay. thinking, oh, that's nice. Bit cold though. Well, what do Warm you, it up. What do you like? Warm to it be, up. What do you like? Hot ice. Is that a thing? No. What do you like to be cold for? I like to be cold for... Oh, 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 the conversations I had with my parents. Right, so if you were going to go to a planet, yes. it was entirely to have a conversation with your parents. Leave me alone! I'm oh, a no. big boy now! Oh, no. Consulted Leave me alone! Okay, but what's the planet like? Oh, it's a lovely planet. Okay. Very uh, cold. Yes. Very chilly. Yes. To match the uh, the temperature of the relationship between me, my father, me, my mother, my mother, my father... My mother and father and the rest of the world. Okay, so if you were to personify those relationships as a planet, yes. what would it look like? Big ball of ice full of seals. Well, that's perfect. Okay, we'll build one of those. Okay, so we're doing, you know, I'm sure we can find pretty pretty standard. Let's let's not make it too big. Let's not make it too big. I found large ecosystems, they're tricksy. You think, well, that's all cold. How would it get hot? It's too big. Moon smashes into it. Lava everywhere. Oh. So we want a nice, just sort of a, a, a small little dinky holiday planet. We can turn the thermostat just right down and it'll it'll make it very cold. Mm-hmm. It'll make the glaciers form. They'll mm-hmm. flow from the mountain. Make it jagged. You know, this is something I found, you know, I'm a professional planet designer. I have a pretty, pretty, pretty basic idea of geography. And I know that if you want a good glacier, got to have some mountains. Otherwise, what's it going to slide down? Oh. So you want it to be mountainous, you want it to be rocky, and then the ice goes on top of that. Otherwise, it's just it's just an orb. It's just a smooth orb of ice. Okay, so we, we've broadly got the idea of the planet. Mountainous, relatively small, turn down the thermostat, Lots the of ice seals. will come. Okay, so that's that's how we do it. Yes. So, but how do we get the water onto the planet? Ah, this is a secret. You know ice? Yes. It's kind of like angry water. It's in calcitrant water that's like, nope, not going to flow. But if you tickle it, just in the right way with heat, it becomes water. Okay. So this ice will just naturally form from the moisture in the air. It'll just suck it out of the air. Okay. It'll make it hard and solid. And then we just got to add a little bit of heat. Just a little bit. And I know, David, we've had problems with heat earlier. Yes, you know, hot I, ice, not a thing. No, not hot ice, not a thing. That's just water. And, and as I say, that's water. So you just you just heat the ice up a little bit. And oh, what's that, what's that coming at? That's water. Bam, ocean. Okay. So we need to... We, and it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, cold planet, heating elements of the coastlines. Right. Below the surface, just so that you have a nice constant flow of water, and then the water will flow out into the wider ocean, and mm-hmm. then some of it will evaporate up into the clouds, and then some of that will rain back on top of the glaciers, and then guess what? It's frozen again. Ah. And now that gently shifts down, and it's just a nice cyclical cycle, right. as cyclical cycles often are. Yes, okay, so you've got the polar bears, they're on the ice, yes. in their armour. Sure. Stancing around. They fight. Are we putting any creeks? Hmm? Wait. They fight. Yes. Why do you think they wear armor? Why would you wear armor? I obviously st- to intimidate your foes. But fashion. Fashion. Because it's shiny. Well, sure. Lots of things are shiny that aren't fashion. Well, not not fashionable things that you wear. Well, sure. So we got, we want some creeks because creeks. Mm, I don't know how I'm going to make a creek work, David. I don't know because it's cold. Will the creek not freeze? Well, what if? There was a designated business part of the planet, oh. which was just creeks. Just creeks. What, like a verdant creek? Or an, an icy creek? 
well, I, I, icy creek. They want somewhere nice and cold, so it has to still be an icy creek. But, but not so icy that the water's all frozen. Yes. OK, OK, this will involve potentially more heating elements, David. I, I just want to warn you. Well, we've got to keep it in its own special place. I don't understand. Some sort of zone. You can't just point at a zone and say, well, that'll be less cold. You've got to do something about it. No, Hartra did want... You can't, you, can't, you can't just say, oh, it'll be in a hotter zone, and then just assume the planet will do what you want. Planets don't listen. Okay. You've got to put a heating element okay, in Okay, so what, well, what do you want to do when you want to make a very specific place hot, but not the places around it? Yes. You get some sort of tiny sun? Yes, we could bury very, very small suns mm. just under the surface. Not big enough to cause a problem. Just tiny little, tiny little suns. I'm sure we have some sort of particle accelerator that could smash something together to make a micro sun. I'm pretty sure we've got one of those. Okay. I'll ask for I'll one. Ask? I'll ask for one. Hang okay. On. Do we have a particle accelerator? Procurement request. Can you just type that into Imogen just to... Uh, just we to have... Just irrelevantly. A particle accelerator. What does it say? Responding. Why do you want this, Drexel? Well, how, how is it asking? How did you know I was asking when David was typing? How did you know I... Brackets, that's Trexel saying that to me, David. But I, David, that's me typing, was typing. Responding. Because you're typing from Trexel's office. Ah, Imogen, you get me every time. Tell Imogen okay. that we want it for valid planetary design reasons. Valid planetary design reasons. Okay. Responding. And what are those? Oh my god, um, it's, I, we're trying to make micro sounds. We're trying to make micro uh, uh, Safe micro sounds. Okay, safe micro sounds. Responding. Uh, it's just a string of pictures of knives? Oh, that, that, that means no, 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 Trexel, it's not going to happen. And oh. also, if you continue to ask it, I will turn your chair into a knife. So, okay. Oh. We do have a particle accelerator, but apparently it's not for us. So, we can't we can't do suns, David. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I just type sorry. Okay, I just type sorry. Apology accepted. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to have to use heating elements. We're going right. to have to use them. We're going to have to bury them under the... I'd have loved to use suns. Well, wouldn't that have been fun? Well, Imogen said no. Yeah, well, you know what? Imogen can... Apology nullified. ...can continue to be an integral part of our lives and a system that I deeply respect and I would like my chair to remain not knives. Watch it, Buster. So we're going to we're going to have to sort of artificially heat some of the planet to okay. to allow for for creeks. Well, what if we just had a very small heating element? Yes. Just under the surface? Yes. Turn it on. Yes. And it will melt around, but because it's very small, sure. It will only melt that bit. You know, it'll have to be a small business zone with small creeks to power stance over. Yes. But, you know, well, we don't know how many friends Lorek Brinnison has. Mm. So, I'm having a little a little friends come into my brain. Knock, knock on the door. Hello, anybody home? Yes, oh, it's me. Trexel's Hello. in. Oh, Trexel's in. It's in my brain, David. Oh, Trexel's sorry. in. What do you want, Thought? Um, hey, you are thinking of putting lots and lots of different heating elements on the planet of a bear that is incredibly cross that you've heated all of its other planets to destruction. We need to conceal these, David. Yes. If they find heating elements... They're going to smell a trap. And sure, are we going to leave loads of capacity unused in these heating elements so at any moment we could just turn up the temperature and melt it right out from under them? Yes, we are going to do that. But oh. they can't know. Right. They can't know, David. Okay. So we're going to have to disguise them. <gasps> disguise them as seals. Disguise the heating elements as seals. Oh, look, a lovely seal friend. Oh, 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 gathering at the coastline. Look, a seal's in the creek. Isn't that nice? And they're just robots, David. Wait, no, wait. Robot heating elements Trexel. swimming around. What, what, We what? need to go into role play. Sure. Role play Holovision initiated. Okay, so you are a polar bear. Okay, okay, yes. Okay. Right. Growl, growl, yes. humans growl. And growl. and so you are you are in a business meeting. Oh buy low, sell high. That quarterly report is not accurate. Dangling over a creek. Oh, look at this. Look at my power stance. Guess where my business is? I'll never tell. Yes. Okay, everyone can see. Uh, you see a seal. Look, a lovely seal. Ooh, perhaps it's a mid-business meeting snack. I'm going to pick up the seal now. Yes, yes. I'm going to take a bite. Oh, it's a robot. It's, oh, it's a heating full robot. Full of heating elements. David, we can't do this. No. There's a day. Okay. Oh, they, 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 the seals are there to eat. So what don't polar bears eat? Um, um, what do polar bears find incredibly boring? that they will never want to interact with them. But they won't, like, notice them and go, ooh, what's that doing there? It's just ah. so boring they will just ignore them. Accountants. Okay, so a ca- 
Yes, yes, we will have a series of accountants. To, because obviously, bears love to make deals, but they're big picture people. They right. don't like they don't like the numbers. They just growl and people give them deals. There have to be accountants somewhere, but nobody notices them. Nobody wants to see them. So we just have loads of accountants swimming just, around, yeah. but the accountants are heating elements. Yes, they're ro- very hot robots. And they've all got little briefcases, and those briefcases, that's the battery. Exactly. That's the battery. Okay, so they just walk around the business zone. Yes. Because business is happening. Yes, yes. That's where the creeks come from. Yep. And and then you've got all of them on beach holidays, which is why they are lining the coastline sure. full of accountants. Sure. Right, well, we've run out of time, like so that's basically submit. that. Wonderful. That Goodbye. Seems that, Submitting. Okay. that seems absolutely top. Right. I haven't put accountants on a planet in a long time. Robot accountants as yeah, well. Exactly, exactly. You know, we seem to have a running theme of robots. We've got we've got very robot-y funny. recently. Yes. Mm. I think you know why. Do you know why? Why? Because as one is forced to, you know, look at the details of things, one just begins to say, robots... Robots. Put a robot on it. Okay. Because robots already exist. We actually don't have to describe how robots work. But then you people just, just know. People just know. People seems like, oh, a robot. Oh, a robot. Oh, we make those. One of your common garden variety robots. Look, that's a common robot. I've got 30 in my garden. And then you just program it to do a certain thing. I'm not a programmer, David. Are you a programmer? No. Guess what? Neither of the build team. There's a separate team that does that. Oh. They can pass it down, David. Ah. And programming will sort that out. All right. Well, so, that's... um. Actually, maybe good. Yes, takes a bit of for twenty for minutes. Yeah, not bad. So tomorrow is the review. Sure. Do you think we went into enough detail? I would say so. And also, quick thought: if I said no, what would you do? If I said no, David, I don't think we've had enough detail. What would you actually do? Uh, what would you? What, what would that give you, David? You've you uh, you've got to open up your mind to the bigger picture. You're such a you're such a small detail clone. Mm. Just just picking your way through the facts, like yes. a, like the floor's covered in eggs, and you need to pick up those eggs and make an omelet out of life. Right. You understand? I think so. Absolutely. Now I need to find some moisturizer to drink because I've gotten to have a taste for it. So I will see you after the weekend. No, enjoy yourself. Friday. Re- what? Friday is the review. That's tomorrow. Oh, is it not? Oh, thank you, David. I was just going to go to sleep for three days. So, okay, fine, right? Fine. So, see, see you tomorrow. I will see you at some point right, over no, the next right few days. and early because Hartro is here and she is your boss. I will see you at an morning. Please make it tomorrow. Sure, that's a day. Thank you. That is a is day. Is that hard? Good. Good. It's I'm glad. Hard. Just, no, that's fine. I left now. Yep. Oh, he did. Okay. Making an omelette. I can't do anything if he... I need to learn to program. Hmm. Imogen, how do I learn to program? Access granted. Hmm. Programming tutorial. Stella Firma is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill Limited and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It was created by Tim Meredith and Ben Meredith and produced by Larry Ann Davis with executive producer Alexander J. Newell. In today's episode, Imogen was played by Imogen Harris, David Seven was played by Ben Meredith, and Drexel Geisman was played by Tim Meredith. The episode was edited by Edward von Adekas and Alexander J. Newell, with music by Samuel D. F. Jones and artwork by Annika Khan. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Discord, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online. Tweet us at the Rusty Quill. Join our Reddit community on r slash Rusty Quill. Visit us on Facebook or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. May the board preserve and keep you.